Hey guys, welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. What's on the docket for today? So we were going through with a couple of the guys in the back and one of our workers, Logan, asked me a very relevant question. And I realized that I'm making a lot of assumptions that people have a basic understanding of like how the algorithms work if they're already trying to mine, right? If they, if they've had experience building a mining rig, they've went out to the mining calculator and they have a fundamental understanding of like, what's the back end? And if it says ETC hash or ETF hash, uh, SHA-256, if it's Bitcoin, that people have a basic understanding of what, what that is, you know, that it's an algorithm and that the machines, that's what the machines are working with, right? That's what, the, what's what they're processing to try to win a block, right? Um, and uh, I forget sometimes that like, like unless you're like really into the crypto or you care, like you don't usually dive into that kind of detail. And what I want to do today is take what I did with Logan today and just fundamentally explain using a point of reference, which I'm going to use this iPolo ETC miner, uh, which is set up for ETC right now and see if we can explain kind of what's going on. Like what, how does the function of, you know, mining actually work? And I know I've covered this a couple times for you guys, but let's take it to the whiteboard today and then just break down. So this is for, if you're watching this and you're like, okay, I have no idea what this guy's already talking about. I'm going to try to break down the basic structure of mining and like why a device like that as an example may only work with one coin and we'll cover also some of the ways of why some coins had to put in protections on mining for like uh you know if a lot of people would try to take the network over so a 51 percent attack we'll cover that we're going to cover a couple things across the board so i'm going to take this to the whiteboard and hopefully you guys are able to follow along I'm going to try to make sure I'm doing it from a very simplistic standpoint. And then let me know if there's other things that I was missing that you guys wanted to see or further. So we're, again, this is kind of an education whiteboard one today. And I break down like what mining is. And we'll use a point of reference as an example today, which is this little device here that we're going to cover later on this week in a more detailed uh, video that talks specifically to that device. But we're going to use it as a reference. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and get right into this one. All right, my dudes. So the first point of reference was we were talking about the iPolo ETC miner. And this is a 130 mega hash miner at 100 watts, which if you saw at the start of the video there, that meter was holding around 90 something watts. I think it was like 94 watts is what this thing's using right now. Now, what's going on? The first question that they, that Logan had asked is, is ETC the only thing that this mines? Now, we haven't done some testing with it to verify that it couldn't mine any other Dagger Hashimo types of coins. And what I did was build out a table that just showed ETH, ET, oops, here, let's get rid of this. Let me get rid of that here. ETH, ETC, and let's say UBIC as a reference. So both of these are, this is F hash, this this is ETC hash and this is UBIC hash is the, the designation that has been defined for these particular algorithm, right? So this ETH is actually Dagger Hashimo, Hashimo, which there's a wiki for that if you want to know more about that. And these have some tweaks to them. So I'm going to say tweak and that is adding like this, which is mass which off the top of my head is something like multiple, I think it's like analysis, subjective scoring. And then UbiCash has also a 51% protection. Also, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Now, these this Dagger Hash Mose is using Kekka and a few other uh, features of an algorithm to make the algorithm be memory hard. And what that means is, is if we have a GPU here, this is a terrible, a thing of a GPU, but let's go with me here for a second on this. And you have a GPU core and you have the memory kind of around it that this type of algorithm is heavy on the memory side of things and not so much on the core. It's like a, like a, a 90, 10 split. So 10%, 90% split on what matters. Okay. So that's where Ethereum originally wanted to make sure that it had a consumer grade 
approach to decentralization because many people could buy GPUs and thereby you would have a natural distribution of people all around the world to where they could, you know, this is a sad attempt at rolling the world, but you would have ability to have people all around the world that could get consumer graded GPUs. It was set up because it was memory hard and it was hard for ASICs to be created because memory is very expensive. So Dagger Hashimo, Hashimo was that. And then ETC had this also. And what it ended up happening is people could double spend Ethereum Classic because Ethereum, let's say at the time had 500 terahash and ETC had about 10 terahash. So then at a moment's notice, easily somebody could get six terahash over here and have the longest. Um, and I know I've already probably lost about half the people, but I'm trying to make sure you have an understanding of like where, you know, the things that matter is the algorithm for Bitcoin. If I was to bring in Bitcoin here, Bitcoin is SHA, so it's SHA256. That's its algorithm. And that is not memory hard. It's uh, very easy for a CPU to calculate that. And that's why a typical ASIC does about 104 trillion of those per second, terahash per second where a typical GPU high-end GPU here will do about a hundred mega hash per second so a hundred million versus a hundred trillion you can see the difference in the difficulty of the algorithm uh, per second so if we're trying to use time as a measurement there and complexity and again most of this hardware is done on GPUs with Ethereum Ethereum Classic but they are now our ASICs which is what this thing is right here so I went full circle back to this ASIC where this is doing 130 so it's right up there with the top end GPUs uh, for only a hundred watts. And to give you an idea, a current GPU competitor to this would be like uh, RTX 3080 non LHR um, uses about 230 watts for 100 mega hash. And then an RTX 3090 uh, would use uh, roughly about 305 watts for about 126 mega hash. So this is probably its strongest competitor right here for 300. So three times more power for this, about this roughly the same output is what this ETC miner is. So that's, you can see the competitive advantage on, a, on an ASIC. An ASIC is not a GPU. It's a more specific application, specific integrated circuit. It's designed just to do the task of this one is ETC hash. That's all it does, where the GPU can do all kinds of other stuff. This becomes a boat anchor if nobody is mining this anymore or ETC changes its algorithm, which happens with some chains, actually will change their algorithm to adjust for things. What is happening here? What, what, what's, if we go back to what is mining? So mining, we'll use this point of reference. This was some back in history for you guys. So what mining is, is you have a blockchain doing stuff and that stuff, each of these blocks are going to give a reward for their effort. I'm putting a dollar sign so don't get triggered, my peoples. But this is giving a reward for being able to take transactions and then order them in a list and then include them into the next block. You are work miners are working on supplying the hardware. There's that sad GPU again, or the ASIC GPUs, and they are deploying those most likely and most often to pools of other miners miners and everybody is show is submitting effectively proof of work. And what that proof of work is for any one of these particular things, if we're saying this is Ethereum Classic as an example, ETC is the network and this is the blockchain with blocks in there. The proof of work that we're doing is essentially this Dagger Hashimo, which, which is the tweaked version of that, the ETC hash. And we are working on little bits of a number line essentially. So I'm gonna simplify this down a little bit. So each of these miners, every single individual GPU is going to get work, which is essentially like a number line. And on that number line, we remember in school has lots of little lines here. And what it's gonna say is that somewhere on this another number line is the answer. But these, you will work on a work package of work, which let's change the color up a little bit here. Your work package maybe for your miners is only between here and here. And you are gonna submit essentially work to this pool 
and that, for that work you're getting uh, it's a numerator here let's do this way the numerator and the denominator so the denominator is all the different miners in the pool this is total and this numerator is you so you have x amount of shares over a total of shares okay so you're paid proportionately out if you're if the, this pool here if we're using this color as the pool if the pool finds a block like let's say somebody got this work package here and they find it it was like woohoo we found it and it's submitted to the pool the pool then broadcast it to all the other pools so pools here pools here this would be like two miners this would be like f2 pool everything i'm saying also applies to bitcoin by the way but for its particular network on its shaw 256 so this particular example i'm using a tc but all these different pools are going to get it and then there's nodes all around the world which are just records of the chain and you the this is going to broadcast the pool has its own node and broadcast out to all these different pools hey we got it we got the next block my dudes pay us so as they submit this to mint this next block the art of, of posting that block they're awarded in this case for the etc is three etc plus transaction fees and then that's what's awarded to the pool and then you get paid out your proportion of the numerator denominator right so if this is just you know if you had one of ten you would get ten percent of that payout of that pool as an example so that's all that's happening at the end of the day is we're all submitting our proof of work collectively to pools you could solo mine you could attempt to do this number line by yourself your probability is very very low to to get one but you know sometimes it happens there's been a few people on Bitcoin that's done it with USB miners but uh, you get the right to submit and if you were doing this locally you would just submit order of transactions highest paying first and then that would go into here and then you would have all the transactions in here and then that's what's updating the ledger now that's by and large what's going on so when we talk about proof of work it's non-deterministic meaning we don't know who's going to win but what we do know is that the problem that we're working on the, this algorithm it's set with a set of rules that looks for a target difficulty right so would you when you go out there and look at your your hash rate calculators you'll see a difficulty like what's the network difficulty at what that means is is saying before when this problem starts for this next block we are going to get essentially some rules that say your target difficulty is x and start working your solution to solve this algorithm with that target difficult with that difficulty right so then you're going to push a valid proof of work from what uh you know how hard it is to get that solution so which just means that it's trying to throttle the production of these blocks that's what the all the whole point of it is it's because this rule that i'm talking about on like etc is 13 seconds if we're talking bitcoin i'm gonna change this to another color for we get this if i'm talking bitcoin we're talking a target block or, or a target time of 10 minutes and what it's trying to say is is that if you're producing blocks faster than 10 minutes on Bitcoin, that's fine. Like if the interval between these blocks is like eight minutes, it's just gonna race to 1,024 blocks because this is where Bitcoin retargets this difficulty. And it's gonna take an average time of how long that took. And if it looks at it saying, hey, this was this average time was eight minutes, then you're gonna see a 20% bump in difficulty. Because it's just, it, it has to try to ensure that the inflation rate of Bitcoin into the ecosystem stays is flat essentially that it's a flat curve right now of 6.25 coins every 10 minutes i kind of jumped on this here for uh bitcoin but it's easy to explain with bitcoin an etc etc has no upper bound so ethereum and ethereum classic do not have a total supply issue you know like it's it will always inflate um ethereum's trying to answer that always inflation through a burn mechanism that you'll hear where it could technically become deflationary um but the etc will continue to inflate and it's at 13 point like eight seconds and it inflates at three coins three etc a minute or sorry uh per 15 for those 13 seconds and then that would be a total of uh 12 etc a minute so it, 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 it this also adjusts difficulty it's a little faster than the 10 minutes but it will adjust difficulty um to make sure that it's maintaining this order and that's where you see the different difficulty set
settings on those particular coins. So this is kind of the basic structure of the things that we've just talked about. So we talked about, you know, a network, you know, if we're talking Bitcoin, proof of work, we're talking Ethereum, we're talking ETC, and we're talking, that's the what network. And then we're talking the, the issuance schedule. So that's 10 minutes, every 10 minutes with Bitcoin having a having it dividing by uh, its issuance every four years. That's why it started with 50 when it came out, it went to 25 in the year 2012 coins per for every 10 minutes to 12.5 four years later to now 6.25 and it's going to drop to 3.125 uh, in uh, another two years it's going to drop to this issuance uh, ethereum has done a more forceful thing where it started at five coins and then it went to three coins and then it went to two coins but these were artificial kind of uh, things that the developers in the community uh, namely long-term holders are, are early buyers of their coin um, really kind of influenced to try to drop the issuance rate of this on top of reduce a burn on the transaction side also. So because there's a lot of fees with Ethereum, so you, you're also getting that. And then ETC went from five and inherited the three uh, issuance thing too, but they have not went down to the two, um, fearing that it would drop the participation on the network down on that. Now there's other one that I left off of here, Ravencoin that we also mine, uh, which RVN is the, the ticker there. And that's using the same principles as Bitcoin, but at 21 billion total potential issuance. And it uses a 5,000 coins per block, which now has recently switched to 2,500. So it's, it's already had its first halving. It won't have its next halving for another four years just like Bitcoin and, that, and that'll go down to 1250 uh, coins when that happens. So some of these have different um, scarcity, like this is a scarce thing. Uh, Ravencoin is only gonna have 21 billion and it has a small burn function also when you create assets on it, which then reduces this supply even further. And then Bitcoin only has, it's 21 million with about 19 and some change already issued. Um, and it has scarce also uh, because of it. ETH and ETH, ETC both have, un, uh, you know, it's always going to potentially inflate um, and has a faster block time, but is these are GPU mineable, GPU and GPU, which is consumer grade stuff that can participate in ETH moving to proof of stake at some time. And it's potentially near future, but we'll see um, where this will then be where you can't mine anymore. So that was kind of a quick recap of mining uh, and some of the elements on here. All these videos could go very long. Hopefully you guys like this one. Let me switch this back over. So hopefully you guys like that kind of content. I literally drew this already once today uh, for Logan to try to make sure from a fundamental understanding, it's how things work. And I know I started with this iPolo device, but then we kind of branched out to some of the other content. But just to make sure there's a good baseline for anybody that you have in your circle that is like super confused on how like mining and that works and give you guys something that's a little more substantive on an explanation, even with my little uh, scratch that I have here on the back whiteboard. So Hopefully this has been a good one for you guys. Make sure you're liking and subscribing. We have a lot more tons of cool educational content coming out and some fun content too. Again, the iPolo device we're going to cover and we have some new GPU stuff and an L7 ASIC also to cover from the Litecoin Dogecoin network for people that are interested in that. Uh, and then we have unbelievable crazy content when it comes to Bitcoin mining with our Four containers, that's 1,440 ASIC miners we're going to be deploying for our setup here. So that's a pretty large uh, deployment. Cannot wait to bring that to you guys here. Hopefully at the start of this month, once we can get these uh, containers plugged in and get them wired up with our transformers. But make sure you're liking and subscribing, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.